There he is. There he is. Right there. Right there. No. What in the world is going on out there? Come on. We can't run this play if you can't get open. Now, come on, let's go. Try it again. A lot goes into the making of a champion. The same is true of the products they choose to play with. Rawlings. All right, that's more like it. Let's see if we can do it again. A never-ending commitment to excellence. The Huskies are basketball's top dogs. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You finally did it. Finally reached the Final Four. And then in one remarkable and memorable weekend, finally won it all. The first national championship in team history. Yes, you can. It was an unforgettable three weeks three weeks when everyone wondered if anyone had what it took to beat Duke. Well, as it turned out, the answer was yes, UConn. And because you did, you are the national champs. But for many teams, a birth in the field of 64 was reward enough. The payoff for weeks and months of grit and determination. And a little high-flying excitement added to the mix. Okay, nice. to the Final Four starts Let's here. go, man. The 99 tournament showcased the top talent in the country, once again providing the kind of fast-paced action we've come to expect from the greatest 19 days in sports. First round. Oh, no. He's done it before. Not this time. The putback. It's over. The Sooners have won in the NCAAs for the first time in nine years. And the Bulldogs of Gonzaga will make history. This will be their first NCAA tournament win. Detroit makes it 11 straight years that a number 12 seed has won. Yeah, we go, baby. 
The man they call the show is putting on a show tonight. Through traffic, weaving inside to the left. Oh, what a play by Arsenal! Spectacular play! But he'll pull up for three. He's unconscious. This kid is terrific. Weaver State has put off the biggest upset in the first day of the NCAA. Look at that. Heavyweights of college basketball, rich in tradition. Bochi, the freshman over Padgett. Oh, that was yes. one home. Boy, I'll tell you what. Back stops Padgett. He'll take the three to tie it. Oh, boy. This feels like a Final Four right here, doesn't it? Padgett again. Got Padgett taken over. That's it's only ball. fitting. It should end in the hands of Scott Padgett. He will carry it home with him. A day and a game to remember. Gonzaga, a team that was confident coming in. They thought they belonged last year. They're here this year. They're making some noise. And for little Gonzaga University, dreams do come true. Spot up, take the three, oh, oh. got it, oh, oh. got it! <laughs> <laughs> Two seconds on Fade the away. shot clock, and he does it again. Wally Serbiak and the Miami University Red Hawks. You bet, Wally. Here we go. Put your seatbelts on. Hey. Showtime. Jarvis as head coach at St. John's continues. And that'll do it. The Yukon Huskies have defeated the Hawkeyes from Iowa. The final game for Dr. Tom Davis after 13 years. And midnight is about to strike for the great story Auburn. More wins than in any other season in school history at 29, but 29 is all they'll get this year. Oh, yeah, give me some respect. Shot clock turned off. Calvary, Hall, eight to shoot. Hall, the runner! Loose ball! It's good! With 4.4 to go! Shannon! Don't want to foul! Shannon from the corner! And it's over! Gonzaga, the slipper still fits! They win it! 73-72!
And so four teams made travel plans to the Sunshine State, hoping to catch a wave to the national championship. With the regular season record of 23 and 8, the Ohio State Buckeyes were one of the true success stories in college basketball. Just a year after finishing last at the Big Ten, the 99 Buckeyes received an at-large bid and were seated fourth in the South region. Coach Jim O'Brien, in only his second season at Ohio State, guided the Buckeyes past Murray State in the first round and dominated Detroit to advance to the Sweet 16. That's gorgeous. Ten. Three. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> In the regional semifinals, OSU raced past Auburn, the number one seed, and then held off a furious comeback by St. John's to win by three. Blocked again by Johnson. Six blocks, Singleton, acrobatic score. For the first time since 1968, Ohio State was back in the Final Four. Returning to the Final Four for the first time in 20 years, Michigan State won the Big Ten Championship and was named the number one seed in the Midwest. Coach Tom Izzo guided the Spartans to 29 regular season wins, including 18 in a row, to finish the year second in the national rankings. Michigan State opened the tournament with a convincing win over Mount St. Mary's and continued with a victory over Mississippi. The regional semifinals featured a memorable game against Oklahoma. The coaster, and he can do that as well as anybody in college basketball. Davis up ahead to Peterson, dunk time. The Spartans then claimed their spot in St. Pete with an exciting win over Kentucky, the defending national champion. So that's a two. Ranger still perfect. Up ahead, there's the quarterback to quarterback combo, and Michigan State back in front. The magic is back. At Michigan State, the Spartans are going to the Final Four. Out of the East rose Duke, making its fifth Final Four appearance of the 90s. The Blue Devils stormed into the tournament with 32 regular season wins and began the road to St. Petersburg with two dominating victories. First, Florida A&M, and then Tulsa. Here we go, uptown. In the regional semifinals, Duke eased past determined Southwest Missouri State and then earned its trip to Florida with a convincing triumph over Temple. Three ball in the corner pocket. Oh, it's great, quick punch. He catches the ball. Bang, 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 bang. You know what? Duke is wicked good. They are wicked good. In reaching his eighth Final Four, Coach Mike Krzyzewski and his Blue Devils beat their four tournament opponents by the incredible average of 30 points per game and established themselves as the team to beat at the Final Four. After winning 28 times in the regular season, the Connecticut Huskies went out west as the number one seed and pounded Texas San Antonio in the first round. This is a team, UConn, that is on a mission to get to the Final Four. UConn then got off to an amazing start against New Mexico in the second round. To get on the scoreboard. 15 to nothing, UConn. It's 17 to nothing, UConn. The Huskies' eventual 22-point win put them in the regional semifinals against Iowa, where the Hawkeyes played tough until Khalid El Amin and Richard Hamilton led a late rally to put the game away. Here he is, down the lane. Oh, what a pass! Look at it. Trying to take more off the dribble. Stop and start. Oh, what away by El Amin. Into the front court, Freeman. Two hands down. Take that. With its 78-68 win, UConn's last obstacle was Gonzaga, the region's 10th seed. But with El Amin struggling to find his game, the Huskies couldn't put the game away. Amazingly, Khaled didn't make a single basket the entire afternoon. El Amin for three. Ah! He's got to get his offense going. So it was up to the rest of the Huskies to pick up the slack. Of Gonzaga, UConn coach Jim Calhoun would later say they may not have a national name, but they sure have a national game. 
enough of a national game to give UConn fits until the Huskies came through with several clutch baskets down the stretch to win a close game 67-62 and give Calhoun his first trip to the Final Four. Hamilton, he's been the go-to guy. Hamilton, short, Freeman. On Friday in St. Petersburg, the four regional champs held practice and made final preparations for the weekend showdown. Their common goal, the national championship. St. Petersburg, Florida and its Tropicana Dome would play host to the 1999 NCAA Basketball Championship. The first Final Four in state history, although the fans sure seemed like tournament veterans. Final Four all the way! You slow it down, you hit it here first! Big Ten Final! Go right through for MSU! You got, you got, you got! The first semifinal featured Connecticut and Ohio State. Today it's Connecticut and Ohio State in the game that'll decide which of these two teams play for the national championship. The emotion of the building here, you can clearly feel it. I could feel it, and I wonder how the players are going to react to it. No, I'm going to feel a lot of emotion, a lot of energy, and hopefully we can just be ready to play and ready to win. Everybody get excited. It's okay, baby. That's what we need. That could be a key to the game today, which players handle the nerves better. I'm hoping that we're all going to be able to keep the uh, lid on all of the emotions. Uh, it's going to be hard to ignore the surroundings. Everybody knows what's at stake and, and what, we, uh, what we're up against. The Huskies, their first ever trip to the Final Four. Now that I'm here, you know, it's kind of like a relief. You know, you really never know how hard it is to get here, but once you're here, you know, you say, okay, I'm here. Yeah, the run don't stop here. Honestly, I'm going to feel great, I'm sure, um, for about five seconds, and the rest it's going to be to try to beat Ohio State. We want to be the team, you know, with a smile on our face when it's all said and done, no way. Final Four is underway. Off the opening tap, UConn's Kevin Freeman would go inside to open the scoring. Freeman steps in, lays it in for the first two. And takes it right at Johnson, the shot blocker. But Ken Johnson would contribute on the offensive end, scoring the first four Buckeye points. That was matched by Khalid El Amin, who scored four of the Huskies' first seven. And when Ricky Moore hit a 17-foot jumper five minutes in. Puts up the fade away and hits. And Richard Hamilton quickly added another. The early UConn lead reached five. A big reason for UConn's early success was Ricky Moore's tenacious defense on Scooney Penn, who responded by trying to force the play with little success. What a grab by El Amin. Nice anticipation. Jones to the basket for two more. UConn exerting a lot of pressure on Scooney Penn. Ricky did a great job on Scooney Penn, and uh, we just helped him out on, on the team defense, and it was definitely a, a great effort. You know, I saw it in his eyes uh, a couple of times when I frustrated him. Uh, making him shoot those tough shots and really making him work in order to get the ball. By now, Jim O'Brien was left to wonder where he would find some offense. But as Buckeyes soon responded and got right back into the game. Wild layup, bad shot, no good, rebound Reese. Buckeyes running. Red with Hamilton, manning him. Beautiful. Reese for two. They come right out of the break with six unanswered to take the lead. Equal to the task. El Amin scored two of his 10 first half points as UConn regained the lead. Then Penn finally got on track. 
Scooty Penn for Ohio State. Still yet to take a shot. Out to Penn, his first attempt, and he nails it. Knock it down, Scooty Penn. Who has first his shot. first three, 2018 Ohio State. With the lead changing hands, Calhoun looked to his two top scorers, Khalid El Amin and Richard Hamilton. And it was Hamilton who would start a Husky run with his first three of the half. Right to Hamilton, long three. Good. And for Richard Hamilton, he moves past Tony Hansen in the all-time scoring list. With UConn up by one, what happened was certainly the play of the game, maybe even the play of the tournament, as El Amin had some fun in the sun. El Amin takes the middle to Freeman, and one! What a pass! I just took the ball behind my back to Kevin. A terrific pass by Colin El Amin to Freeman, baseline left, who jammed it home as he was fouled. You can look for that on the highlights of every television sports cast in the nation tonight. And I said, oh my goodness. Colin El Amin on center stage and has everything going thus far. It takes a little bit of fortitude, I guess would be a good word. <laughs> I was definitely pumped up. It was a big play and a, and a big time of the game. Inspired by El Amin's acrobatics, Hamilton's jumper then capped off an eight point UConn outburst. And he's warming up. UConn leads it 26 20. That's their biggest lead of the game. An 8 0 run. Struggling to keep Ohio State close, Scooney Penn hit his second three pointer of the half to shave the UConn lead to three. But UConn was relentless and soon raced out to its largest lead of the game. Well, I mean, and UConn's knocked down its last five shots. Saunders snatches it away, three on two. Hamilton pull up, yeah. six straight made baskets by the Huskies. The seven-point deficit, the largest of the tournament for Ohio State, and it could increase. El Amin, Savovich is back, trying to turn around. Follow up for two more by Hamilton. It seems that the Buckeyes are actually tired. UConn is just beating them back down the floor. Just when it looked like the Huskies would blow right past Ohio State. Come on, Max! The Buckeyes toughened their defense and got back in the game. During a brilliantly played five minute stretch, Ohio State outscored UConn 10 to nothing and regained the lead. Underneath, Brown for two more. Yes. Oh, wow. Kellen Elamine drives to the right baseline and Brown picks his pocket. Up corner to go to Singleton. Goes to the hoop ball alone and dunks it down. Buckeyes on a run of their own. Set now at the free throw line where Kevin Freeman handles. Triple shot blocked and taken away by Penn from behind. Penn breaks down the floor right side to the hoop. Now passes low on the left and Red lays it in. Ohio State's back up on top. 33-32. Pretty good solid comeback by Ohio State here when they really were threatening to blow them out. By now the Huskies knew they were in a dogfight and finally ended their scoring slump when Hamilton scored his 15th point of the half. And strong move to the hoop, and Richard Hamilton goes to 2,000 points in his career. Even though UConn had regained the lead, momentum was on Ohio State's side when the half came to a close. More back to Saunders. Johnson. Swatted out by Johnson. Well, Ken said, don't bring it in here. This is my territory. Well, it had been 32-23 UConn, but Ohio State closes the half with a 12 to 4 run. Leaving the court, Jim Calhoun knew his team needed to lower the Buckeyes 50 percent first half shooting. I think that's the one thing coach emphasized, you know, as long as we play great on defense, you know, our offense will come. Coach came in and he told us, you know, you got to step it up defensively. We let him get a lot of open uh, looks and a lot of easy layups. And, you know, once we came out in the second half, we regrouped and uh, came out ready to play. Led by Jake Bosco. <laughs> And Khaled El Amin. UConn jumped out quickly in the half's first two minutes. Chased out by Bosco, ahead it goes to El Amin. He bounces to Bosco who dumped. And when Hamilton finished off UConn's 9-2 run, the Huskies again moved up by eight. That's just an All-American making something out of nothing. Down but not out, Ohio State closed to within four on two of Michael Red's team high 15 points. Stop, shoots it from five and drills it. 45-41, Connecticut's lead. The Buckeyes try to come but back. But challenged once again, UConn reeled off six unanswered points. 37-41, Huskies leading. 12 and a half left in the game. Moore speeds to the free throw line. Steps out right point, top of the key. Saunders launches a shot from the line, got it. UConn's getting some contribution for some other players on the floor. The last two 
of the spectacular variety. And heads right, Moore cuts him off, spins, has to force it up. No good, rebound tipped by Saunders, and Moore comes up with it. Leaves ahead to Elamine, three on one, alley -oop for Jones, who catches and lays it in from the left. A spectacular hoop for Rochelle Jones. It all started with Ricky Moore's defense on Scooty Penn. He just won't let him penetrate. To hold him and limit what he, his, his impact upon the game was magnificent by Ricky Moore and our entire team. And Jimmy O'Brien's going to use his final 22nd timeout. UConn, its first double digit lead of the night. With time now becoming a factor, O'Brien sensed the urgency of the moment. And once again, his team responded. Back to Hamilton, head of the key. Left corner throws to Jones, drives, pulls, bounces in a lane, taken away by Ohio State. Red leads the break down the right side of the floor. Goes to the hoop low on the right, scoop shot block, Colt, and it called. The Buckeyes trail 51 45. But first, Hamilton had the answer. Bosco pick, penetrates left, drives it, lays it in. He went around Johnson like he was standing still. And then El Amin, who scored on another driving layup to give Connecticut a comfortable lead. El Amin with 16, the Connecticut lead is nine. The Husky fans urging their team on. Hey, Utah, Utah, Utah. 49 left in the dream turnaround season for Ohio State. But the Buckeyes refused to let their dream season end and went off on one final run. Getting in the lane and coming across the lane with the soft sky hook. Five on the shot clock. El Amin with the defender slipping. He'll take it to the hole and it's up behind. Lane. Up ahead to Red. Moore defending. Red. Moore game is down to three. Buckeyes will not go away. And neither would El Amin, who lifted the Huskies once more with the last of his 18 points. Nor would Hamilton, who beat the shot clock and iced the game with the last of his team high 24. The Hamilton moves left, puts it up, and it! With the shot clock running down from the right side of the lane. 61-55 UConn, a minute 35 to go. I think that was the difference. Now they've got to make three, two to three possessions, and I think the game, in essence, was it was least, not safely, but least on the It was a big time play. It was a big time play because, I mean, they was really making a run. You know, uh, you know if we got a basket, you know, on that play, it would probably take a lot of momentum away from them. Penn puts up the shot, and the game is over. You can book it. UConn continues on to the Monday Night Final. Husky. A team that everyone expected to get to the Final Four have now gotten to the pinnacle, the national championship game of the NCAA Tournament. The second semifinal saw Duke face Michigan State. As the two teams took the court, Duke's strategy was clear, utilize the many talents of its All-America center, Elton Brand. I think we just need to continue to do the things we've done to make ourselves so successful, especially get either ball down low. You know, he's the player of the year, and I think he's been the most dominant player in college basketball, and we'd be stupid not to get him going. One thing we want to do is keep him as far away from the basket as we can. I mean, if he gets anything inside the key, um, I, I mean, some, you can just hang it up. <laughs> For Michigan State, an air of confidence would be the weapon needed to combat Duke's intimidating presence. And I remember as a kid, like 13 or 14, my like my first pair of shorts, you know, was was some Duke shorts. You know, we're the program that's trying to get where those programs are, to be honest with you. And I don't think we'll be as intimidated, nervous, yes, intimidated. I don't think so, but you never know until that ball is uh, thrown up. And from the moment the ball was tossed up, Duke made good on its intentions going inside to Brand, who scored eight of the Blue Devils' first 15 points. I don't think there's any way Hudson can stay with Brand down inside. Elton Brand playing like a man possessed. We want to know Brand Man, is he strong, mobile, and strong. They have got to find a way to deny Elton Brand or it's going to be a long day. Brand was also monopolizing the boards. On his way to 13 first half rebounds. And his defense was smothering as well. What else do you want him to do? He may sell popcorn and drinks at halftime. I don't know. 
to Mateen Cleaves at Michigan State, the rest of the Blue Devils were just as ferocious, stifling the Spartan attack, holding Michigan State to only 29% shooting in a dominating first half. We talk about Michigan State's toughness right now. Duke is out toughing them. Duke's defensive pressure was also creating easy offensive opportunities, allowing the Devils to steadily build a double-digit lead. Highlighted by two of Corey Maggetti's nine first half points. Ball picked up by Langdon, loops it ahead for Maggetti. Showtime! Woo! Uh oh, Maggetti o. <laughs> Halftime here at Tropicana Field. The Blue Devils showing why they are the dominant team in college basketball. 20 more, let's go. Keep getting after it, baby. Just 20 minutes separated the Blue Devils from a date with UConn. If they could duplicate their first half success. Second half, we win this game on defense and on the boards. Let's do the second half. Let's go. One, two, three. Win. William Avery opened the second half with four quick points, putting Michigan State into an even deeper hole. And Michigan State now with its biggest deficit of the tournament, down 14. But the Spartans would respond. Led by some Mateen Cleaves magic, State forced itself back in the game. Allowing Mateen Cleaves to dribble the length of the floor. Let's go defense! And look at them back into the game and within six. Michigan State hanging in there. Cleaves open three. He is rising to this moment. FSU! 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 To the corner. Kelly likes it from here. But misses again. That's two times. Look at traffic. He gets it back and bangs it home. Over a lightning quick five minute stretch, Michigan State had outscored Duke by nine to pull within three. And Duke's troubles were about to mount when the heart and soul of its attack became uncharacteristically careless. The second Where's he going? He better pass. Got Carroll out and he's got a charge. That's his fourth. That was a bad play by Elton Brand. We were really nervous when Elton went to the bench. It was then, though, that some of our kids stepped up with just big time big time plays, Langdon and Avery in particular. Up by just three with eight minutes left, senior Trajan Langdon helped keep Duke ahead. Langdon dribble jumper three, yes, big three Trajan Langdon. It arguably was the biggest shot of the game. It was at a point where if we don't get a score, I may have to bring Elton in then. And it was all on Langdon. I mean, it wasn't a play, he just faked came back and even though he hadn't shot well the entire evening, it was down. Then they came back again and then William, I think, read Cleves very well and sticks a three. Now he uses the jump shot to set up his drive. 6.20 to play in the ball game, 57 to 50. Avery controlling the basketball, takes Cleves down inside the leaner, is up, rolls over the rim and into the net. Well, with Brand on the bench for almost five minutes, the lead has actually increased by one, from eight to nine. From then on, Michigan State would get no closer than six, and much to the delight of its fans, Duke had advanced to the championship final. The Blue Devils are going to play the Connecticut Huskies Monday night for the national championship. And so it was down to the final pairing, Duke and Connecticut. The final game would feature two champions in an epic battle. Two teams that sat atop the polls for the entire season and combined for 70 wins versus only three losses. It's once in a lifetime opportunity. I've been dreaming about this ever since I was a little boy, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to go out there and make the most of it. We know that these are the last 40 minutes of the season, so we have to come out you know, and give it all we got. We want to play in a national championship, and now the moment's here. We got to seize the moment and go out and play with all our heart, leave everything out on the court. Everyone doesn't really remember who was in the championship game as much as you remember who won it. So we really have to hopefully play our best and you know get this victory. Everybody's watching. Everybody in America is going to be watching. The one thing I want to do is just come out and have fun, because I feel as though it's an opportunity of a lifetime. You never know if you're going to get in this position again. If we win, It'll be the best for me that I've had in my coaching career. I'm going to have high energy and high intensity, and hopefully we can be a better team over 40 minutes. One more game, 40 more minutes, and you know one of the two teams will walk away the national champion. Now you get the chance to see you know, who's the best. They look like they're the best coming in, and when they throw the ball up, we'll find out who is the best.
Duke and UConn. Who would be number one? And the 1999 championship game of the NCAA basketball tournament is underway as Duke controls the opening tip-off. Early on, Duke took control, and as it had done throughout the tournament, raced out to a quick lead. Farewell. Sends it off to Langdon, drops it to baseline on the right side. Avery puts up the jumper good. And the Lit Devils will take a 2 to nothing lead right out of the blocks. Duke's up 4-2. Over to Battier for three, yes! Shane Battier puts Duke up by five at 7-2. Just two and a half minutes into the game, UConn needed to regroup and regain its composure. They were just playing better than us in the beginning of the game, and we just had to fight back and start settling in and playing our type of basketball. It's 9-2, to two, Duke, and here come the Huskies. Down by seven, UConn promptly got back into the game. Keeps the dribble alive, spins right, gets a step down the lane all the way, lays it up. Led by Ricky Moore, the Huskies survived Duke's initial burst. Grand tips on the floor. El Amin gets it ahead to Hamilton. What an effort. And when El Amin's hustle paid off with Richard Hamilton's second basket of the night, UConn had settled down. Now Ricky Moore steps in. Second time he's taken it inside, both times he's delivered. So UConn down 9-8 on four second. The left Hamilton for three. Short, long rebound, Hamilton gets it, banks it off the glass and in. Good follow by Hamilton. He and Moore have all 10 of UConn's points. It's 11-10, UConn looking for its first lead. Moore appears back to the right, finds Hamilton on the curl. It's a bad pass, Moore gets it back. He drives right, stops, pops, banks and hits. Ricky Moore has given the lead to the UConn Huskies for the first time at 12-11. Get in there, Early on, no one could stay with Moore. Moore, three-pointer. He's got the feeling, folks, in the championship game. As he scored nine of UConn's first 15 points. I do, uh, you know, whatever needs to be done on this team. If it's scoring, uh, you know, I'll come out and do that. I thought Ricky was terrific. He just took it upon himself just to score and score and score. But Moore's early explosion would soon be matched by his former high school teammate, Duke's William Avery. Scoring nine first half points, Avery first kept Duke close and then helped give the Devils the lead. And on the right to Avery for an open three. Good! He has seven. It's 21 18 Duke. Alamine well, tries to get it inside, stolen by Brand. Husky's seventh turnover. Here's Avery quickly to the front court, fakes the three, drives down the lane all the way, bumps into one, and the shot rolls in. Avery now with nine. It's 23 18. And just when Duke threatened to pull away once more, UConn's hopes were dealt a potentially serious blow. Throws it to Avery. Avery stripped by Elamine, but they call him for a second foul. Leaving with 9.05 to go in the half, and his team trailing Duke by two. But he'll have to take that second foul and sit down for a while. Naturally, you're a tremendous asset to this team. It's kind of scary. You know, anytime, you know. Uh, a guy of Khalid's caliber, he's on the bench. But it is a team effort. With El Amin on the bench, Ricky Moore continued his phenomenal play, scoring the next four UConn points to give the Huskies the lead. Tied at 26, Moore back for UConn at the foul line, drives left baseline, fadeaway is good. Ricky Moore on fighter with 11. Now Bosco back to Moore, cuts, he moves to the left, banks it up and in. And Ricky Moore is hot as a $2 pistol. He's got 13 points, twice his average. More and more. It's looking like UConn can stay with the Blue Devils till the very end. UConn's bench also pitched in, outscoring and outplaying Duke's vaunted subs throughout the game. First, it was Albert Mooring. First points of the game for Mooring. UConn's bench with six. Huskies up 32-30. And then Washmel Jones, who helped keep UConn ahead. Side floats it up and in. First hoop of the game for Jones. Four Husky subs have a hoop. And UConn leads it 34-32 with 3.35 to go here in a very good first half. With just under two minutes remaining in the half, UConn was playing its game. And when Richard Hamilton scored his 10th point, 
the Huskies had their biggest lead. A big reason for UConn's first half success was the play of center Jake Voskel, part of a double team that had effectively taken Duke's Elton Brand out of the game, leaving the All-America center frustrated and confused. Jake did a great job of staying tall and big and really, you know, not giving him any easy shot. Brand got it on the inbounds pass, could not convert it. Nice job by Bosco. As soon as the pass goes into Elton, that Kevin needs to come over to do a big to big double. Double up on Brand again. Reach in. Look at Hamilton this time as they double up effectively again. And Brand has only attempted one shot and missed it. They are playing physical inside, folks. We had to take a couple things away, and obviously they, we took away that, that shot, and obviously the kickoff pass to Langdon. Down on Elton, tries to work his way inside, looking, still working. Calhoun's strategy worked to perfection, causing three brand turnovers while holding him to only five first half points. Oh! With a little hook. You don't see that often. Without a meaningful scoring contribution from its inside presence, Duke had to rely on getting its points from the outside. And when they came, they came in a hurry, thanks to senior guard Trajan Langdon. Trajan in trouble against Moore. He'll take that step up three, made it, he's out of the play! Oh my goodness, what a shot by Trajan Langdon! Count the three and a foul of the play on Ricky Moore. With Langdon scoring seven points in the final minute and a half, Duke took a slim lead into the locker room. That's the end of the first half. Duke 39, Connecticut 37. For Duke, the second half opened, much like the first half ended, with Langdon on fire. And Langdon is warming up. 41 apiece. Ada Langdon turns for the three. Bingo! Trajan's fourth three of the ball game gives him 17 points, and it gives Duke a three-point lead at 44-41. Crossover dribble takes the top of the key, reverses back to the left side, jumps it off, Brand slammed up! And when Duke finally figured out how to get Brand the ball down low, the Devils looked to be in control. Sends it back to Caravelle on the right side, dives into the paint, dishes, Battier, slammed up! 48-43. Seeing Duke attack UConn here in the second half, going right at the teeth of the defense, dumping it off for easy baskets. But the Huskies had an even bigger problem. Less than four minutes into the half, Khaled El Amin had committed his third foul and was headed back to the bench. I was frustrated with him only because I know he's such a great player, and I, I didn't want us to get to winning time when he's so good, when he's so good, and not have us in position to win. This game is very winnable. We've played at our pace. We've, we've got to be able to get a couple scores here and then a couple stops. But once again, the Huskies would respond, narrowing Duke's lead in a hurry. Led by Albert Mooring. On the left, Mooring, three for three. It's off the front rim, no good. Freeman, a one-hand rebound, and he sticks it back. Terrific basket by Kevin Freeman. And Suleiman Juan. Juan in the blocks. Sewell backs his way in. Pump fakes to the baseline. The turnaround is good. UConn's bench had risen to the occasion, keeping the Huskies in the game with El Amin in foul trouble. I hope they can keep it close until I come back. But now it was Richard Hamilton's time to shoulder the load, and he responded by quickly scoring six of his game-high 27 points on his way to being named the Final Four's most outstanding player. One-on-one, on one. takes it right on Langdon, the baseline jumper is good. 15 for Hamilton, you count up two. Rip is the man we look, to, look for, he, he's our horse and he's, he's the man. Hamilton goes left to the top of the key, takes it left along the lane, the jumper, good. Hamilton heating up with 17, 55-53, UConn. Offensively, he took the game over. He's sensing, Jim, that nobody out there can guard him. I just took it upon myself that, you know, I had to step up. This is where I wanted to be. I wanted to be in the spotlight, you know, and I just want to take advantage of the opportunity like I did. Up two with 12 minutes to go. UConn had survived its time without El Amin. Now Hamilton and Khaled would start to drive their team toward the finish line. Bosco. Got it back. 
And there is Khalid Al Amin. 59-55, Connecticut. Then Hamilton would take his game to another level. Four sprints right, takes it into the lane. Left side, Hamilton three, good. First three of the game for Hamilton. He's got 20, and UConn's up five with 10.25 to go. I was on a fast break, went full court, and I outran a couple guys, and I saw him in the corner. I just spotted up. You know, I think that's what we've been doing all year, and he did a great job of penetrating and giving the ball, and I just released it. Being wide open, he, he doesn't get that many looks during the game, so I knew he was going to knock it down. Looking at his back as he goes to line things up, and there was no doubt the moment I saw him naked that he was going to bury it. He seems to have the, the, the tremendous ability to make big shots, and that's a time that's that's a sign of a great player. And for Hamilton, the big shots would keep on coming. Nine minutes remaining. Open as Hamilton, you can't do that. Richard Hamilton is hot as a pistol. 22 for Rip. 65-59, you got under nine to go. Down six in unfamiliar territory. Duke began to mount a comeback. Trailing Hamilton into the face. Shot blocked by Elton Brand. Picked off by Avery. By sheer will alone, Brand brought his team back with plays on both ends of the floor. Flying for the lay-in. And it's 65-61 with 8.25 to play in the ball game. Brand is stepping up now like a heavyweight champion. While Elton had erased memories of a difficult first half, Hamilton and the Huskies had seemingly hit the wall. UConn's dream of a championship was in jeopardy. None of its shots were falling, and its lead was slipping away. Runs four and a half without a field goal. Meanwhile, Duke's intensity had reached a peak, and when Chris Carrowell hit a runner in the lane, the Blue Devils had come all the way back. Five minutes remaining. Carrowell wants it. Carrowell ties it. The 13th tie and a timeout. Game deadlocked at 66. We had called a 20-second timeout just to kind of regroup a little bit. We knew that we was like one or two stops away from winning the national championship. And we felt as though we really had to dig deep. He came in, told us what we needed to do, and told us to get back out there and start playing. With the game on the line, UConn first turned to Khaled El Amin. You almost feel like Khaled El Amin feels it's his time, even though he's had a rough shooting game. The game we longed for all season in college basketball to determine the national champion. Six seconds, five seconds. Elamine going around. Avery, the runner is up good. Oh, big shot by Elamine. 68 66. And then to the tournament's most outstanding player, Richard Hamilton. There are three minutes and 39 seconds left in this championship game. Every possession so critical. Hamilton left open after Brand went for the steal, and a three gets him the five point lead. Ten goal for Hamilton. He's got 27, UConn's up five. I knew it was going in when it left his hand. He was in rhythm, and we ran the play for him, and I knew that was going down. He really thrives on those type of games, and he just showed why he's the uh, best player in the nation. I wasn't actually at the three-point line. I think I maybe was at like the three-point uh, NBA range, and I said, you know, if I get an open opportunity, I'm just going to go ahead and shoot, and I shot it, and luckily it went in. Hamilton's three seemingly put the Blue Devils away. But the nation's top-ranked team wasn't done yet. UConn up four. Langdon sends it to Carrowell on the left side. He'll take a three off the rim. And on the rebound, Ben Abedier out to Langdon. Three, yes! Trajan Langdon, huge, huge three. His fifth of the night, 73 to 72 with 135 to play. With UConn up by one, El Amin would save his best for last. It was, after all, winning time. He has a true sense of the moment, and obviously he helps seize the moment for us. I love playing when it's tight, a national championship. The scene is nothing better for that. <laughs> I said, Khalil, you know, it's your time. You know, you're going to make the big shot. I got a feeling that you're going to make the big shot. And he really took it upon himself to believe that. 1-10 to go. Eight on the shot clock. El Amin with Graham defending. Splits the defender. Oh, it's the three-point game. El Amin's last basket came with just over a minute left. But for Connecticut, the game was far from over. For William Avery. He sets, puts it up. It's good with 54 seconds left. It's a one-point game again. It's 75-74. Well on the shot clock. Well, I mean, again, spinning, firing short. Carrollwell has it. Duke with the basket, can take the lead and win the game. 
I heard Coach K tell Trajan to go to the ball. Wow, Trajan Langan with the ball, and he's going up against a great defender. I just remember I was just sitting there praying. Once he tried to take me off the dribble, I just played solid on defense. I said, please, ball, roll off his foot. So I kind of played off him a little bit and made him drive. Nine seconds to go. The whole season on the line, and Langan in the top Once he went to the spin move, I was right there in his face, and he took a couple extra steps. After Langdon's miscue, El Amin would have another opportunity to prove his medal. This time, from the line. And once again, Khalid didn't back down. Khalid El Amin, 0 for 2 from the line tonight. I just want another opportunity to redeem myself. I had no doubt, no doubt in my mind. The ball's in Khalid El Amin's hand. I know he's going to finish. 5.2 seconds to go. The sophomore from Minneapolis North looks up and puts up, and he hits. He's clutch. It is clutch, clutch city Elamine. Here's Elamine second. It's on the way. It's in. UConn up three. Trajan Langdon's going to take it to Lang to the floor and try to get it off. He doesn't have a lot of time here. Pressure from Jones. Langdon trips, and UConn has done it. <laughs> Folks. You gotta believe because just when people say you can't, you can, and UConn has won the national championship. What once was a dream is now reality. UConn is the national champion. Husky 77, Duke 74. To win a national championship is just the pinnacle of college basketball. This will go down as one of the best nights of my entire life. We won the national championship and no one can take anything from us. We're the number one team in the nation. We, we, we beat the so-called best team, and we just feel so happy and, and, and so glad to, that our hard work has paid off for us. It was kind of crazy because when I looked at the paper and it said, UConn wins, it really didn't hit me yet. We really win the national championship, and coach came up to me on the side and said, Rip, come on, we got to go cut down the nets. And I said, oh my goodness, we done won the national championship. Every guy who's put a connected uniform on shared in this championship, I think all the people around us kind of made this a special moment for us. A lot of people always said that we couldn't win the big games, and this was the big game, and we won it, and we definitely can. It was a special, shining moment for us because it, it said to these kids, all the things that you've done and been brought connected to this particular level, now this team pushed us across the finish line. It was a one shining moment. All night long, Coach Jim Calhoun and his Huskies had all the answers including the most important question of the entire tournament. Could anyone beat Duke? Well, as we found out, yes, you can. Did it. We bring it back home to Connecticut where it belongs. There he is, there he is, right there, right there. No, what in the world is going on out there? Come on. We can't run this play if you can't get open. Now, come on, let's go. Try it again. A lot goes into the making of a champion. The same is true of the products they choose to play with. Rawlings. All right, that's more like it. Let's see if we can do it again a never-ending commitment to excellence.